Hello guys, welcome to episode 3 of the Next Access Control Explanatory Series. In this video, we are going to go over the AC3 Access Enforcement Control. But before we start, as usual, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Also smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new video. Thank you and let's get started. Access Enforcement It is an access control mechanism for regulating access to information system and computer networks. Access control is a security technique that regulates who or what can view or use resources in a computing environment. It is a fundamental concept in security that minimizes risk to the business or the organization. Access enforcement is based on access control models such as mandatory access control (MAC). Role-based access control, discretionary access control, or the rule-based access control. But the most commonly used model is the role-based access control. Now let's read the control requirement in this special publication 853 Rep 5. All right, so now we have AC3, which is the control number, and we have access enforcement, that is control name. The control requirement starts from here. It says control. Enforce approved authorization for logical access to information and system resources in accordance with applicable access control policies. Now, to understand this control further, you can read the discussion. Discussion. Access control policy control access between active entities or subject, that is, users or processes acting on behalf of users. And we also have the passive entities or object. These are devices, files, records, or domains in organizational system. In addition to enforcing authorized access at the system level and recognizing that systems can host many applications and services in support of mission and business functions, access enforcement mechanism can also be viewed at the application and service level to provide increased information security and privacy. In contrast to logical access control that are implemented, Within the system, physical access controls are addressed by the controls in the physical and environmental protection family, that is the PE family. But the AC3 is only addressing the logical access control. So we have physical access control and we have the logical access control. The logical access control is being addressed by this control, AC3, right? And then uh, the rest of the physical access control is being enforced by the PE family. Alright, so now control requirement simplification. Let's see how best we can make sense out of this control. This control is used to make sure the organization and or information system access control lists are working as they should because every system or organization have access control lists who has access to what resources within the organization. If the access control list is in place and is working, then enforcing the control or enforcing access control become much, much easier. That is what this control is saying. All right, so let's read that again. This control is used to make sure the organization and or information system access control list are working as they should. That is allowing authorized users access to only the resources they have the need to know for. If they don't have the need to know for, if you're a regular user, you cannot be performing an administrator role or functions. That's what this control is trying to enforce. Uh, some benefit of access control enforcement are, it simplified access management. It keep track of all activity. It requires specific credentials for access. Improves security and minimizes risk. All right, so now let's look at the control assessment approach. If you are a security control assessor and you are taxed to uh, assessing this control, what are some of the pointers that you need? All right, so to ensure that this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional effectiveness, we do the following. You obtain and examine the access control policy and procedure. The dash one control is always, you know, it's a must for you to understand exactly how the organization set up these policies. Also, you also obtain and examine system security plan, the SSP, 
so you can compare and contrast the SSP and the Dash 1 control to see if there are any discrepancy between the two documents. All right, number three, you request the list of all users on the system or component you are testing. Review and make sure all the accounts on the system are properly labeled. Number four, you select sample of users, about 25% of the entire system user population, because you cannot possibly test the, the whole users on the system. That is if the, if the system has a lot of users. But in case where the system has few users, I mean, why not? You can just request that, you know, all the population. But if you have hundreds, you know, definitely you need to have a sample that you select and then you can request, uh, and then you can request the uh, access control list and examine them to make sure it is properly set up. Number five, make sure the user initial access request or modification form, these are the key, request or modification form. The role on that form matches their role on the access control list. So the initial request or the modification. So if the role, maybe the person was hired as a regular user, but somewhere along the line, the person became uh, the system admin. So there must be a modification form attached to the initial request, right? So therefore the request or the modification form are the things that you're gonna look for and then make sure you compare that with the current access control list to see if they matches. If they don't, then there is a problem. All right, number six, for demonstration, you know, ask a couple of uh, regular users to perform a system administrator activity. If they are able to do so, then access enforcement is not properly implemented. So this is like a walkthrough, uh, like a demo, right? So you can just select somebody at random and say, okay, try to log in as an administrator or try to do an activity that is uh, reserved for an, uh, an admin. If they're able to do that, then the access, uh, the access enforcement is not properly implemented. All right, that's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC4, Information Flow Enforcement. Please, if you find this video useful, hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm will expose this video to a lot of people. And I'll see you in our next episode.